Good afternoon, y'all. Welcome to Israel Vision. Um, I hope everybody's been having a good week. And um, t excuse me, I have hiccups. Um, today, I actually wanted to get into a couple verses and read them really quickly and then speak on the topic that I was going to speak on. And um, the reason why I'm going to do this specific video today is because of uh, the different uh, mind frames going around um, concerning... Um, who should be able to enter heaven, who is worthy of God's love, you know, all that stuff. Um, I get judged a lot, believe it or not, because of my skin color, because I'm white. I know that sounds crazy, right? Um, because we're so used to people being judged on being black instead of white. Um, but I know um, as the tr truth continues to come out and the genealogy of the region and people start using common sense, um, the Messiah, when he was walking this earth, Jesus Christ, Yahusha, whatever you would like to um, title the Messiah. Um, when he was here, he was a colored man. Yes, he, he was not white. He was a colored man. The pictures in the church houses are actually Caesar Bourget. Um, now, the bloodline was scattered to the four corners of the earth. Even when um, the Messiah was walking this earth, 10 of the 12 tribes had already scattered. Um, and that is, you know, speaking of the 12 tribes of Israel, um, which we know that God created everything and there is a hierarchy. So even past the uh, physical bloodlines, everything was created by God. So to say um, one person can or cannot enter heaven or is or isn't worthy of God's love, no man has the right to say that. But I said that to say... Um, I get judged a lot for being white. I get told that I am an Edomite. And I know some of you people who um, are a little bit deeper into truth or who may actually um, study um, the Hebrew doctrine or however you want to word it. Because a lot of times there's not even human words to articulate these things um, or express them correctly without saying things like religion or doctrine. Um, but for those of you who do follow the Hebrew doc doctrine, you know that they say, you know, of course, we know the Messiah was black, but they say that um, Israelites are only black or Mexicans. Like basically white people are Edomites. They can't get to heaven. I'm going to tell you right now, that is completely false. Let me say for, for one, we know that it says, you know, be careful how you treat strangers because you could be entertaining angels unaware. It doesn't say be careful how you treat your neighbor or be careful how you treat your brother. It says be careful how you treat strangers, which indicates that it's going to be somebody that's not like you, which means that even if someone's not Israel, they could be a divine being here. And you should be very careful how you treat people because you never know who's sent on a mission from God. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what species they are. God, at one point in the Bible, even used a donkey. Yes, on the road to Damascus, I believe it was, was it Paul? I always get Paul and Peter mixed up, but I, I'm quite, yes, it was Paul because Paul's name was changed from Saul to, to Paul. But on Paul, the road to Damascus, um, there was even a jackass, a donkey used to basically send a message. And so um, the verses I'm going to read on today and I hope I'm not going in circles, but um, basically, yes, I, I uh, get judged or condemned by others because I'm white and I'm a woman. So with those two things, I am basically told not to speak or that I am only allotted a slave position in the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to tell you that is the furthest from the truth. Don't I don't care what anybody tells you and I don't care who gets mad at me for this. It literally says that you must come to the kingdom like a child. And I'm going to read these verses here. Matthew 8, 3. And now these are going to be in ESV. Remember, I usually like to use the King James. But at this point, like I said, a lot of things were really mistranslated. So we're just going to go for um, the basic pieces here. And I'm, th these are translated from the ESV version. Matthew 18, 3. And said, truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children... You will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Mark 10, 13 through 16. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indig indig ugh, indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child 
shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying, laying his hands on them. I tend to read faster sometimes than my mouth will allow me to speak. So I do apologize for that. And I'm going to be conscious of trying to slow down um, in future, even with my speech, because I'm a very high energy being. So um, Matthew 18, 1 through 35. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say unto you, unless you turn and become like a child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. I'm going to stop with those verses. And I want to say this. Let's think of children. Even in like memes on Facebook, even when it comes to like the Black Lives Matter movement and when it comes to racism, it is clear that racism is not something instilled within you when you're born, but it's something that is taught because when you bring children together, they don't see, they don't see that they walk in the purity of love. They only start coming away from that as they grow older and are programmed and taught through their exterior uh, circumstances and situations. They have to be tough. The crazy thing is, is love is instilled with us. It's instilled within us when we are born, but hate is not. And that right there is, is a statement within itself. Matter of fact, it's so instilled in us that without it, we would actually die. And there was actually a scientific study done. And I will look up the name of the study and put it in the comments for any one of you who would like to go research it later. But there was a scientific study done um, with newborns. And in one room, they allowed the newborns um, only to be fed and changed. Just basic needs. No talking, um, no love, no kissing, no holding, none of that. Changed, fed. Basic needs, that's it. In the other room, the newborns were allowed um, the talking, the interaction to be held, to be loved, to be rocked, all of that. Um, in the one room where there was no love allowed, no in interaction, no nothing except for feeding and changing, uh, I believe it was within two weeks the, new the newborns had died. So it didn't even take two weeks of no love for these children to die. Um, but in the room with the love, they, of course, they flourished. They, they continued. And this was an experiment done in, I want to say here in America, as a matter of fact. Again, I will put this in the comments. But love is so instilled within us when we are born that without it, we would die. That's how much that is so much a part of us. And hate is not. Hate has to be taught and programmed. And I, I, I said all of this to say, unless you come to the kingdom like a child, you will not enter in. So this hate of other people, I don't care what color they are. I don't care if the Messiah was a black man. And Lord knows I am not saying this in, in a way of disrespect towards our, 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 our God at all in any way, shape or form. Um, because I am, you know, one of the ones to spread the truth concerning this fact of this matter. But what I am against and what I am um, saying here is I don't care what color the spirit of our father was sent here in. You cannot hate or condemn another person and think that that is okay or think that you're going to get into the kingdom. It says to come into the kingdom like a child. Unless you come, unless you come to God like a small child, you will not enter the kingdom. And in one instance, it's with the purity of love and with the purity of non-judgment and non-condemnation. Children are almost accepting of anything, and they're also very honest. E even when it sounds ugly, a child is not meaning it in an ugly way. They're just being very honest. I'm going to give an example of my little brother. Um, we were really young and we went to visit my uh, great grandma in a nursing home. And there was a really old man sitting out there on the bench. And my brother was so young. And he just looks at the guy and says, hey, your nose is really big. And the, the old man kind of laughed. 
um, and then made a comment, you know, yeah, my nose is big. But as a child, he did not mean that maliciously. He was just being really honest, like, hey, that's a big nose. So as a child, you're, you're not judging others. You're not condemning others. You're very humble and you're just pure. And I know there's kids that are more advanced that are exposed to certain things um, that might not be as childlike as they should be. I know that this is a world we live in at this point, but I'm talking about the pure essence of a child, a child that has been nurtured properly and has not um, unfortunately went through things that they shouldn't have went through before their time. When you look at the essence of a child, there is a purity there. There is a love, a non-discriminating love. Um, and God is love. And, um, you know, there is an order in which we are supposed to abide by. And um, I haven't really been getting too deep into that. As I'm just starting this channel now, this is going into my second month. I think I barely have like 16 or 17 videos up. And I haven't really gotten in too deep of trying to, I guess you can say, some people would call it preaching at people. But there is an order in which we are supposed to abide. There is a law and, and it is actually for our benefit. Um, but that's not the video I'm doing today. Um, the video is is on coming to God like a child. And so not only is that going to be with the purity um, and the non-discrimination and the humbleness. But there's also an awe like wonder that children possess. There's also a... And I don't want to say naivety because when you break down the true essence of the truth and everything, we've actually been lied to um, our whole lives. So a child is, in a sense, actually not naive, but knows to almost believe in everything. And and let me break this down a little deeper. You know, children believe in fairy tales. Children believe in the magic. Children believe in the monsters and the this and this and this. And when you really think about it, all those things are actually real. Um, as adults, we have turned away from the truth and we have been blinded by the programming. And, you know, the veil has been all over the earth for thousands of years. So we don't see the monsters anymore. Um, we're not as sensitive to those things as children are, which is why some children are do actually see these things. It's not an imagination. They actually see these things. Um, because of, of their closer connection. Um, but, but it's, it's with that as well. It's with the belief. You have to come to God with the belief of a child, just the full acceptance and belief as a child would believe as a child would accept, um, as a child would love. Um, this is not a fairy tale, but there is magic within uh the realm of the kingdom of heaven there is magic there is um it's supernatural everything is of god so it's not gonna be natural um i know a lot of people don't experience a lot of the supernatural um i have been fortunate enough to experience quite a bit of supernatural especially in the last couple of years of my life um but that is the other part of coming to god and the kingdom as a child it's not just with the humbleness and the pureness and the non-judgment and the love of a child, but also the um, belief of a child, the full faith. Um, as children, we, um, we're not so independent, you know, we're not so uh, uh, ready to um, just do things on our own and we're not so ready to just, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say at that point. Um, but um, we're so ready to believe in something as children. We're so ready to um, feel safe in in uh, the realm of not necessarily being a follower, but knowing that somebody has a plan. And when I say that somebody, I, I'm truly meaning God. But as children, you know, we usually look to our mother or our father, um, you know, for that plan. But as adults coming to the kingdom as a child, it would be God that we look to for that security, that plan, the, um, you know, the safety net. Um, so I truly believe um, that it also is meaning that um, that we have to truly come with full faith, believing in the magic. And yes, there is magic. And I know some people would say, oh, this and this. Oh, that's taboo. That's witchcraft. No, witchcraft is um, going against people's free will. 
Um, that's black magic. God don't even do that. But I promise you there is magic in the kingdom. You know, um, it says, you know, that Moses was going up against sorcerers and some of the greatest wizards of Egypt when he was coming um, um, to get, you know, the people of God. And if he was going up against sorcerers and wizards, what do you think he was doing? Dancing and jumping around? I don't think so. Um, the man parted the seas. Christ walked on water. If you guys don't think that's magic, then I, <laughs> we must be reading. I don't even know. We must be thinking two different things or reading two different books. I don't know. But yes, there is a magic within the kingdom. The synchronicities, the, the miracles that happen even on a daily basis for me is just magical. So um, not only do we need to uh, love and accept everybody because vengeance is the most highs and it's only the most highs job to separate the wheat from the tares. So when the harvest comes, you know, the farmers go through and um, they basically say to wait, wait till the harvest before you separate the wheat from the tares. Because if you pull up the tares now or pull up the tares before the harvest, it might pull up the wheat as well. So this is what God does. Uh, this is God's job only to separate the wheat from the tares, not man's. It's not man's job to separate the wheat from the tares. And it's and it's. Uh, about that time, but it's not quite harvest time yet either. So yes, you um you have to come to the kingdom like a child, within the love, and also realizing that um there is going to be supernatural things going on. You have to open your mind like a child, and I'm not saying to accept the deception or the lies, but when you are fully under the Most High and you are in alignment, you will be able to decipher the difference with the Holy Spirit in your life. So um. Yes, um, a lot of things it's like I, I reiterate and I go into because I know there's a lot of people that do not have common sense or that are looking for things to argue with. And this is why sometimes I might repeat something or I might um, go into a deeper understanding of it just for that sole reason. Um, but yes, you guys open your minds and move in love. Uh, I am going to start doing some more educational videos because um, I know the last few that I've done have been mostly on like a word and, you know, just certain things that have been going on or certain things God puts on my heart to speak on. But I am planning on getting back into some educational videos, connecting the dots in history, as well as getting into some of the deeper um, things concerning the actual law and uh, some of the things that are going to assist you in your journey and the things that um, God is expecting from us. Um, the creator is expecting from us. And I'm just going to say this. Um, a lot of the laws in the Torah are actually high vibrational ways of living. These are actually things and ways a lot of rich people uh, uh, follow. Because it's actually very high vibrational and it, it keeps you from getting sick. I'm not going to get into it because that's a whole other video. But yes, even eating pork is you know there's a reason why there's a law for that and not to eat it so it's just like i'm gonna get into that i'm gonna do a video just on some of the torah laws and why they are are better for us and it was never about um making rules but giving you a better way to live a more high vibrational and alignment way way to live within the human body um anyways i think this is going to wrap up this video um i do hope that everyone is doing well um, I am still on my path. I'm still going through my personal things. I'm still trying to work out my physical workout plan and things like that. So again, bear with me. I'm going to keep these videos up at least, like I said, once a week. I'm trying to get back to where I'm, I'm going to do two a week. Um, but, you know, I'm doing so many things, including healing myself. So I do appreciate anybody who's already been watching, anybody who has subscribed. If you haven't subscribed and you came across this, please like and subscribe and share. Um, I can assure you that you will find gems within these videos. Um, anyways, hope everybody has a wonderful evening. And until next time, don't forget to shine your light.